excited to be here and to be working on a remake a little bit. Um, if you are new, uh, welcome. And if you're if you've been here for a while, uh, welcome. Um, I am going to be working on. Uh, <coughs> I think the documentation today. But I need to um, actually fix a bug first. So let's let's look into this bug. It's a kind of exciting bug. Um, okay, so the bug is. Woo, Salvin, how's it going? Um, congratulations uh, for being the first one here. Uh, Android, how's it going? Um, <laughs> why is it why is it going uh, x x over the eyes like you're completely <laughs> completely exhausted? Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm feeling I don't know a tiny bit worn down this week, but not too bad. You know, part of the reason I'm I'm worn down right now is uh an audiobook. Um, have you guys ever heard of the book uh, Shoe Dog uh, by the founder of Nike? Here, this is the audiobook here. It's really good. I was up until la uh, 4 a.m. last night listening to this book. Um, I don't know. I mean, even if you don't really like like large corporations and you know stuff like that. It's still a pretty interesting book. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. He like travels the whole world before starting Nike. Um, well, Android, then you should <laughs> totally check out the Cliff Notes because it's uh, it's very interesting. He like so he like goes to Hawaii as like the first thing of his like world traveling thing, and then he gets stuck in Hawaii. Because it's so nice that he just decides to stay there for a year, and then um, and then he tr goes to Japan because he's seen some shoes there that he thinks would be would do well in America. And I don't know, it's just it's fascinating. Every step of the way is fascinating. He starts off from like, you know, not not really rich or anything. I think his family's pretty well off actually, but. <clears throat> I don't think they're like super rich or anything. Um, and he kind of builds up things like step by step. Yeah, that's really interesting. He's like a young kid too when he goes to Japan. And then he travels to like, I'm not kidding you, like 20 other countries within like three or four months. Uh, he goes to like Rome, he goes to it uh, well, like Italy, Rome is in Italy. He goes to um, a few places in Africa. He goes to... Uh, India, I think he goes to China, Hong Kong, uh, obviously Japan, um, and then he goes to uh, Vietnam, like right before the the war starts, and he like he says he can like feel the tension there, and uh, yeah, he just travels. I think it's like at least at least twelve or fifteen countries uh, in the period of like a couple months or in the period of a year, I think. Um, but yeah, very interesting stuff. Um, okay, so, uh, what does Salvin say? Uh, where you're in a new building downtown Montreal now. Ooh, but there was a huge drama with GitHub. Oh, yeah, 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 because you did, um, you did the thing I did, right? When I opened up one password and <laughs> it leaked all my, uh, private information. You did that, but with GitHub, right? Um... <laughs> that that really stinks. That's the worst. Uh, I'm sure I've done that too. Hey, Levels IO, how's it going? Uh, uh, Peter, how's it going? Um, so let's see. Sup? Uh, where where are you? Uh, so Levels, I was just talking. Uh, or I, I guess I should call you Peter. Um, I was just talking about Shoe Dog, 
Have you read that book? Oh, no way. Huh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking... Uh... Oh, okay, cool, nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of similar. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's Phil Knight, the founder of uh, Nike. He starts out going to Hawaii, gets stuck there because it's so nice, goes to Japan, talks with them about a, a shoe, like getting a shoe made, then travels the whole world for like the next, I think four, I think it's four months. And then he uh, comes back home and he like starts Nike on a shoestring budget and like is barely <laughs> making money and having trouble keeping up with the demand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, in, I was reading it a while ago and then I just heard the um, Indie Hackers podcast. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, what, what's his name? The indie hackers guy, um, Cortland. Cortland was just talking about um, shoe dog, so it inspired me to get, get it. Yeah. Um, that stinks, Sullivan. How's your new office, uh, Sullivan? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Steve Jobs was definitely. It, it, Phil Knight talks a lot about like wanting enlightenment too, which I think is probably like a a pretty consistent thing among founders. It's like, I guess I'm going to uh, leave behind the rest of the world and just find enlightenment. Because I, I don't know, I definitely have that. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I like that. That's cool. That's awesome. That's cool. <laughs> No, you're good. You're good. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'd love to see your office, uh, Salvin. That's awesome. Very start startup vibe, so that means you have, like, all, uh... <coughs> what do you call it? Like, see-through? Do you have see-through, like, panels for every office? Or do you have, um... Or is it just an open office? And you have bean beanbag chairs because if you don't have beanbag chairs, it's it's not a startup office. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all your walls are glass. I you know I actually like that a lot. I think that's that's really cool. I don't like the open office um, setup. <clears throat> well, you know what, why I don't like the open office setup is because I worked in an office where the sales team, the marketing team, and the development team were all right next to each other, and so the sales was like always on calls and like walking down next to the developers um, and just like screaming. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, so are you in like a WeWork or a work bar or something? Okay, so let's start our server and let's uh, go into remake framework. So just so um, <clears throat> So you guys have some context about uh, where I'm at. Um, oh, it looks like I have some uncommitted changes there. Nice. Okay. So you're not going to have to move again when we <laughs> we work goes out of business in like a month. That's good. Um, okay. So I'm just <laughs> I'm just kidding. Am I am I not? I mean, who knows, right? You never know with the startup world. Uh, okay, so added some doc strings. <clears throat> okay, so where I'm at right now is I got a few things, a few things going on. So one is I want to get the website up. Uh, but before that, I need to just fix a few small bugs. Because um, I, you know, okay. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so and then this is all in preparation for a big project so, so the big project is the remake CLI uh, that handles deploys uh, so this is a huge project that I'm going to be working on with um, <coughs> Solvin and a few other devs and I'm very very excited about it but I'm also um, investing a decent amount of my time and uh, money into this project, so I'm very nervous that it can go wrong. Um, 
So, <clears throat> uh, so what I'm trying to do is like prep as much as I can from for that. And one of the things I'm trying to do is um, create like documentation videos uh, for the whole framework so that I can like hand these off to devs <coughs> if they want to get started developing Remake and they want to understand how the pieces fit together they can just watch one of these documentation videos I think it's just a documentation video <coughs> and I think it's probably about an hour I'm gonna to try to keep it as short as possible but I'm not I'm not great at that so maybe it's maybe it's an hour and a half maybe it's two hours maybe it's 45 minutes I hope I can keep it at 45 minutes um, but I'll probably have to edit it to get it down to that point. Um, so what I did the other day is I did a trial run, which is something I would never do like like a year ago. Like I would never do like a trial run for like an hour long documentation video. But I've learned over time that like the more trial runs you do, the more the better the final product is. <clears throat> so I I did a trial run. And while I was doing the trial run and exploring the back end and the front end, I just like ran into a few bugs. <laughs> so that's why I'm fixing those bugs today. But it's kind of cool like reading through the code and seeing how it fits together. And um, there's nothing like taking a peek under the hood to, to give you uh, at the simultaneously more confidence and less confidence in, in your framework. Um, yeah. Well, the cool thing is that it wasn't even like a live demo. It was just like um, thinking through the code and how the code works. Like I didn't even like test the edge case that made it not work. It just like, I was just reading through it and I was like, oh, no, this won't work in that, in that circumstance. I can show you what it is. Um, so it's in the, uh, oh, is it API route or render route? Um, it's for getting that data. I think it's in the API route. So here, yeah. So here, okay. So when we render a new item, um, so let's go to go to our example application. Uh, so we have this like example to do zap right here. Can I increase the font size? I can. Nice. Okay. So this is our uh, six line <laughs> example to do's application. If you're wondering why I'm calling this six lines when it's obviously not six lines, it's because um, it's actually one line. It's a one line application, guys. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no, um, it's because these data attributes are on multiple lines, but they don't have to be. So, uh, so this is six lines. So this is our six line um, uh, this is our six line uh, application and this is a fully uh, well I haven't <laughs> I haven't well I did test this but I, yeah I did test this so it's not it's not completely accurate but it's pretty accurate that this is a full application um, the only thing not accurate about this is that you probably want to have like a <clears throat> like a landing page that has a link to like sign up or log in and that's not included in this example but I don't know, I think this is a full application. So this is um, the full remake application and, uh, oh, I gotta space that out there. So when you um, do this special loop, so for each item, and you name each item uh, with using item name uh, right here, <coughs> you can create a new item and add it to the end of that list by doing data I knew uh, to do. And that'll use the template that's inside of the for each item. It'll use this as the template, and then it'll render this uh, using some some you know bootstrap data that you define. Yeah, I guess that's another thing is you have to define the bootstrap data. Well, you don't necessarily have to. If you don't define the bootstrap data, you're just not going to get the the to do dot text. But you've got a new item, and you can still edit it. So it is working. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, watch, watch David's stream trying to convince himself <laughs> that this is a real application. Um, okay, so it'll render this uh, list item and then it'll add the rendered list item to the end of the nearest uh, data O type list, data output type list. 
So it'll add it right to the end of this UL right here, um, or in the in the for loop if you if you prefer. Well, this is server rendered, so whatever, right? Um, this isn't going to be on the client. So um, <coughs> the issue is that uh, this um, data I knew it'll work with this for each item in concert with the for each item. But it also works with partials. So if we define a partial template in here, right, to do .hbs, it's also going to um, render that. Okay. Um, so it'll either render the, render the thing inside of item name, right? So this template, or it'll render the partial. And it defaults to rendering the thing the thing in item name. Um, so in order to have the to do partial render instead, we're gonna have to just rename this to like I don't know something else, right? Or, or rename the item name. Hey, Commander Root, welcome to the chat. How's it going? Um, so the thing we the, the thing we added, uh, I think, last week was this for each item thing, but it doesn't work quite how we expect it to because what we do here is we find we get the partials right. So this is from the partials directory, and that's going to include the bootstrap data for each partial. So you see, in bootstrap data, we have partials. And then, for example, for the to-do, we have to-do.text is equal to hello. So that's going to be the starting data for each new to-do. <coughs> so we get that along with the partials. However, if there's no partial found in the partials directory, we're also not going to get that bootstrap data. And so here, even if we're getting the template render function from the uh, for each item loop, which is what this is doing, we're not going to have bootstrap data to go along with it, even if it's defined, just because we're getting it at the same time as the partial file, which we just said doesn't necessarily have to be defined because you could just be using for each item, right? I don't know if that, <laughs> that probably doesn't make sense. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot, but um, basically what it means is that we have to get the bootstrap data separate from the partials. So let's do that. So we're going to go into get project info. Um, okay, so we're going to say get bootstrap data separate from partials. Okay, so in here, um, we loop through. Um, let's see, what are we looping through? Get project info, base route, username, okay, tree. Where's the tree? The directory tree of project files. So we're looping through every directory in here. Hey, Angel of Light, hey, hey Silverbeat, how's it going? What are you guys up to? Um, we're looping through every directory and subdirectory inside of this, and then we're saying, okay, if we run across uh, <coughs> a um, file with the extension of handlebars, then we're going to do um, uh, some initial setup, and then we're going to see if, if it's a page or if it's a partial. And then if it's a partial, we're going to get uh, its bootstrap data and add it to the um, partial object. Now instead of that, so what I think I want to do is see if we're in the bootstrap data directory. So I don't know exactly template path. Yep, that looks right. Okay, so let's get the end of this if statement here. And you know what? My, uh, <laughs> my braces aren't matching. Oh no, they are. Okay, good. We're back to braces matching. They weren't matching before. Um, okay. So here's here are the template paths. Um, so we're going to do else if, and we're going to say a uh, template path. So this will give us the whole path. So it doesn't matter if we're like deeply nested inside of one of these directories. It's still going to give us uh, the full path. So we're going to say underscore bootstrap data. And you, you may be wondering. But David, what if we're in what if we're in a file 
inside another directory that's named underscore bootstrap dash data. Then this is also going to return true for that. And to that I say, uh, don't name your files underscore bootstrap dash data. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there's no guarantees here. Uh, but no, I mean, the likelihood of someone naming of another file in another directory that is unlikely. And if they do do that, hopefully they'll realize their mistake. Um, but yeah, that's something that a more mature framework would probably... <laughs> yep, <laughs> don't do it, okay? <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, partials. Which I, oh, okay, so this is how it's getting the bootstrap data. So we don't actually want the bootstrap data in the partials at all. We just want it in a separate thing. And I believe what I want, let's see, partials. And I think I want bootstrap data to be an object. And I think I want it to be, I think I want it to look like this, uh, like user. And then app data. Uh, like like that, and then um, I believe it's. I don't know why I name these things all like this. Um, so if we go to remake data, okay, user app data and user details. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so details. It's fine how I named it, I guess, because uh, yeah, user details and then user app data. Okay, so we got that, and then comma, and then we're gonna have the um, the partials data. So I think we can just do this partials, and then have an array like that. So <clears throat> this isn't actually necessary to have this object kind of like predefined like this, but it will give me an idea. It's like kind of self-documenting, right? It'll give me an idea of the shape of the data. Um, so if I'm coming back to it later, it'll make sense. And actually, I might need it. Yeah, maybe I will use it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so bootstrap data. Um, so now we have that. We can get rid of this. Um, So now how do we get the path, you know? Um, so let's look at how we get the other ones. Um, template string, layout name, nope. Okay, here we go, template path. So template path, um, File name. Template path is going to be path join and then dir name, and then we're going to go up two directories. So I guess, yeah, we're in here, we're going to go up two, and then we're going to go into um, <laughs> value.path. Okay, so value.path must include project files. Yep, okay, good. <laughs> I have an EG here. This is like my substitute for test driven development. Just like put a bunch of examples. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is the template path. Ooh, here's the thing. We're right now we're only looking at um, files with the extension HBS. So that's uh, interesting, right? That's not good because we're gonna have uh, JSON files in our bootstrap data. So this isn't gonna count for that. Okay, so let's um, welcome pretzel hands. Uh, what is it like having pretzel hands? Um, doo, doo, doo. I'm actually, I'm sorry if you do have pretzel hands. That sounds kind of hard. Um, okay, so I think we want to move this stuff up here. And then template string. I don't know what template string does. Okay, yep, yep, yep. So we actually only use, oh no, we do use template string down here too. Okay, good. 
Okay, so um, if values, so this, this um, thing here, we don't really need, or we, we do need, uh, sorry, we, we need it, we just need an else down here. And then, um, I guess we could say else if, right? There's no, there's not like a harm in like checking to see if it ends with a JSON um, extension, because that's all we're going to use right now. We can change this later if we need to support other file types. So we're going to see if it ends with JSON, and then we're going to say, um, and template path includes bootstrap data. Okay, so now we're in the money. Now we got it. Uh, okay, cool. So now we should have, now we know we've got bootstrap data here. So now we want to get the path to the bootstrap data, which is also, which is actually going to just be the current path. So if we value path, yeah, it should just be template, template path, um, which I want to rename because it's no longer uh, relevant. It's not it no longer makes sense to call it template path. So we're going to call it like current file path. That's that makes me feel already more confident just by renaming that. Because I'm like, oh yeah, current file path. That's what I want. Um, okay, so let's see where we where we use that. Um, do we read that anywhere? We do. We get the template string here. So we don't actually want to read the full file. I mean, we do. We don't want to read the full file, but we want to uh, parse it. So do I have JSON file here? I do. Do I have any async stuff in here? No, I think I removed the async stuff because it was causing issues. So I decided to do everything synchronously, which is OK, I guess. Um, for now. Okay, so we have, oh, we're using it right here. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to do um, this. Okay, and instead of this, we're going to do current file path. Current file path. Okay, so that's gonna take. That's gonna get the bootstrap data um, for the current file. Now, how do we? And let's delete uh, this here. Yeah, we don't need this anymore. Um, hey, Riemann, 264, and Ali Salahio, how's it going? How are you guys doing? What, what's up with your lives, your development work? Are you learning? Are you uh, working on a big project? Um, what are you up to? <coughs> um, okay, so we have the bootstrap, the bootstrap data for the current file, I believe. Let's just console log this. <laughs> Because I kind of just want to see what this looks like. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, good. So we got a type error. Get project info line one. Replace. Ooh, why does it say line one? Oh, you know what it is? So this isn't always going to have <coughs> an extension. OK. Uh, well, huh. Chandu, how's it going? It's been a while. Um, <coughs> how, are you, how are you doing? Uh, how are those uh, 
community guidelines coming along. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, you work on whatever you want, or nothing at all. Uh, but yeah, how's your, how's your life going? Are, are you still learning? Um, were you learning React? I forget. Okay, so this says, what's our cannot read property replace of undefined. Okay. Uh, get project. Oh, 2631. Okay, so value name is undefined sometimes. Okay. So I don't know, maybe we want to put this inside of the if. Um, how about this? How about we we do we end this here and we say like uh, if value name then file name equals this. And then here we do the same thing. If uh, value path, although I think it should always have a path. I think it should always have a path. So actually, let's not do it for that one. Yeah, let's see. Okay, crashed. The path argument must be of type string. Okay. Okay, well, I guess not. Okay, so we're going to say if value path, then current fi uh, file path equals this. Okay. And that's good. Okay, so that should work. Okay, boom. So now we've we've got some some starting stuff. You work with Angular, with TypeScript, and .NET Core. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, well, how is that? How is that going? Um, anything? Any uh, anything you can share with us, or any progress um, on what you're building? Okay, so I guess we're, what we're doing, what we're getting here is to do, to do list, and to do this. So I believe that's coming from the user too. Yep, to do this. Why are, oh, okay, because these nested arrays aren't showing. Okay, that's why it's not looking like that much data, even though it is. <coughs> okay, so I guess the first thing to do. Um, so file name, okay, file name is going to be like the plain file name, uh, file name, file name, file name, file name, file name, okay, let's say file name without extension, just to be clear, and then, uh, hey, Asha, uh, Asha Barris, hey Ren Renodo, uh, how are you guys doing? Reno, what are you guys uh, working on? Anything interesting? Okay, so we have the file name without extension. <coughs> so what we're going to do here is we're going to do bootstrap data and uh, so now we need to tell whether it's the user uh, details or whether it is the whether it's a partial. <coughs> so, uh, choo choo, everyone on the train. Wait, is as what's the train? I don't understand. Uh, you're working for a company for the past nine months on a web app with uh, that stack. A proprietary software. Okay, so you can't tell us anything about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. 
I didn't even notice. There's like so many things going outside my window. There's like buses every like five minutes. There's, you can hear an, a cop car in the background. Uh, my street is incredibly busy. Um, but no, that's cool. I love trains. Trains are great. Um, so we'll do file name without extension. Okay, so we need to tell whether we're in the user directory or the partials directory. So, um, in order to do that, I want to console log uh, current file path. That's what I want. Okay, so remake framework project files bootstrap data partials and user. Okay, so we're going to say uh, if current file path uh, includes, and we're going to do, you know what, I'm curious here, why do I say this instead of that? Uh, CMS da software dashboards, etc., stuff like that. Okay, cool, nice. <clears throat> yeah, because I think I can have the slash in there because we know we're in a file, so we know it's going to have the slash. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that'll make it a, a tiny bit less likely that they're just going to name some random file that. Okay, so now we're going to say current file path includes partials slash else if uh, current file path includes user. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to do this one. <clears throat> um, so we're going to say bootstrap data file name without extension is going to be equal to bootstrap data for current file. Okay, um, now this might not work actually. Read file, sync. So yeah, we do need to do a try catch, I believe. So we're gonna do a try bootstrap data for current file. I almost forgot about this. Um, and We're going to do that. Okay, so it's going to default to just passing an empty data object as the bootstrap data. <coughs> okay, so now we've got current file path. Uh, we're in the partials directory, so we're going to say bootstrap data. Oh, okay, wait, wait. This is my mistake. So we're going to say bootstrap data dot partials. Okay. And we know that we have that because we defined it up here. So <clears throat> we're going to do dot, dot partials um, and then the file name with that extension and then equals bootstrap data for current file. And then we're going to say <clears throat> else if we're in the users directory, hey, uh, I can it. Um, what are you up to today? How are you doing? What do you like working on? Um, so now if we're in the users directory, we need to do a simple test, right? So it's either going to be details or app data. So we can say if file name without extension is equal to should we make this strict or not? I think we should. Let's just say app data, else if file name without extension. Or actually, you know what we could do? No. No, we'll make it strict. Never mind. We'll say or details. <coughs> okay. Um, 
Oh, you know, no, actually, we could do this. So we could say, or details. Um, now we can do bootstrap data dot user file name without extension is equal to bootstrap data, bootstrap data for current file. Okay, so now let's um, console log our bootstrap data after this and see if we got it. Okay. Um, So we got, um, so this is looping through. So this is the final one. So we got user details is an empty object. Uh, that's because we have no details file there. <coughs> App data is to do list and it's pointing to an array, which is correct. Nice. And we've got <coughs> the partials to do and to-do list. To-do is going to point to that, to-do list is going to point to that. What you are hosting in this URL. Um, that's a web application I built with uh, Remake.js. Um, so it's, a, it's pretty much how Remake was born. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool little application. It kind of lets you like <coughs> create like example projects, um, for your clients as a freelancer. Um, so like if you have like, you know, editing services, you can do this. Um, and then you can upload your image, uh, <coughs> where is me? Um, and you could like up, up, upload a, a backdrop and you could like upload a backdrop for your first project. You know, it could be like, uh, thank you. Yeah, I think you, Mark, I think you gave me some feedback early on. I really appreciated that. Um, I still haven't implemented most of the feedback I, I've gotten, but I fixed a few major bugs and I'm planning on doing like another re-release of this project soon. But um, the framework that I used to build this has actually ended up <laughs> taking a lot of my mind share. So, um, I think it's a really good framework. So yeah, that's what I'm focusing on these days because I want other people to be able to create a web app like this in like a couple of weeks instead of, uh, it took me about a year, year and a half. So nice. Yeah. Uh, well you should, um, well not that you should, but if you want, you can check out, uh, remake the web.com. This is, uh, the underlying framework behind uh, the site and it'll give you like um, you know all the editing out of the box for you so all you have to do is like tag different elements on your page and then you get the editing built in the saving built in the user accounts built in um, creating new items built in yeah it, it really takes care of a lot of stuff for you yeah it's uh, I would I mean I know <laughs> I know you're uh, incredibly busy but um, yeah, if you have time, that would be awesome to, uh, if, uh, if you could check that out. Man, really getting some of the uh, the uh, stars of the industry in here right now. For anyone that doesn't know, um, Mark, I actually have to look you up, but I know you did something amazing. Uh, Colbert. Your last name's very hard to spell. And I didn't, did I not get it right? I didn't even get it right. Mark Cole, oh, Brudge. Okay. Um, okay, well, yeah, you're just the maker of <laughs> Work in Progress Chat where I 
uh, posted the stream. Um, awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, this is, he, uh, Mark runs an awesome community called Work in Progress Chat. If you're working on, like, a side project or something, it's an excellent and, like, supportive community to be a part of. Um, yeah, very, very cool, uh, place. Um, hey, Daniel, da uh, Daniel, how's it going? Um, <coughs> what are you working on today? Uh, also, um, uh, Mark, what are you, what are you working on today? I'm curious, like, what is, I don't know, what are you, <laughs> as the person who runs work in progress chat, what, what does your day look like? Doubledecker.js. Let's check that out. Is it this one? Nope, that's Chris. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, not a real thing. That's funny. Um, Okay, so let's see. So it looks like we got the right bootstrap data. Yeah, I think I think that's all coming through okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite everything. <laughs> well, not really, but we have to rewrite a few things. So routes... What is this? Partials. Okay. Oh, it is a real thing. Use the best of two technologies. Use React and Vue together. Oh, that's cool. Okay, but not really. <laughs> okay, I mean, I was trying to be uh, generous, but wait, I, you know what? I really can't tell if it's a joke or not. Is it? Okay, it's not, <laughs> it's, it is a joke. It isn't, I don't know. Either way, it's cool. I mean, even if it is a real thing. Okay, I'm glad. It, I'm glad it's a joke. <laughs> but no, I mean, I think there are actually uh, production companies that use multi. I, I heard about this. Like, there's, you know, the whole microservices, like my, like component, like micro component architectures they have these days. There are like some companies that have separate teams that are working on like this component or this component or this page or that page, and they're like written in entirely different technologies. So I, I think that's a real thing. Um, you could probably like sell some enterprise company on it for like a hundred thousand dollars or something. You know, like <laughs> I don't know, or at least twenty thousand. Yeah. I mean, I know um, Spotify does the like Teams thing, you know, where they'll have like cross-functional teams that, or, or and like individual teams. So like one team will be like the sidebar team, and one team will be like the music recommendation page, and one team will be like the playlist, you know, the main playlist app page. <coughs> but they don't use different technologies for creating the whole app. But I think some people take that to like an extreme, where they're like, okay, this team's working on the sidebar. And they can use whatever they want in even like a different backend. <laughs> um, and then it has to like just expose an API for this other team that, you know, and so you have this monstrous web app for something that does something very simple. Um, but it is good in a way. I mean, it's not good for the user, but in terms of, uh, which I mean, obviously should be the primary goal, but <laughs> it is good, I think, for, um, uh, you know, the engineering team. Um, just to be able to like work on things that are separate enough uh, as long as you're exposing an API uh, that you can work side by side on it. Hey Alfred, welcome to the chat. Um, okay, so we're close. We're close to this. So um, 
we, we need another function uh, that's going to get the bootstrap data. Wrap uh, data. And do you guys, are you guys really proud of my, uh, my copying, <laughs> my uh, ability to copy objects with uh, this very advanced technique? So project info dot partials. Okay, get project info here. Okay. So I need to, uh, let's see, bootstrap data. Okay, partials. And we're going to say bootstrap data here. That is the same. Yeah, it's a really, really, really cool technique, and it's super fast too, because um, <coughs> JSON parsing and, and stringifying has become incredibly quick. Did you hear about that thing um, the other day where Google was like, if you're, if you're initializing your app data like statically on the page, you should use like JSON parse with a string instead of defining it in line? Isn't that crazy? Oh, you're trying. Oh, you're trying to. You're trying to set up a remake package. Okay, a project, uh, and you're getting that error. So in, do you have a variables dot n file? You need this to find in your variables n file. A session secret and a port. If if you if the variables n file didn't get created for you automatically, please uh, let me know. Because that should be happening. It works on my machine. <laughs> no, but uh, are you on Windows? Because I think um, I'm not sure how well Remake works on Windows. Because I haven't really tested it that that well, <coughs> or that much, um, or at all. Okay, uh, yeah, I think, um, <laughs> geez, okay, uh, I feel like an asshole now. Um, no, just because I was just thinking the other day, like, I was just thinking through the commands that I use, um, and I was like, do those work on Windows? I don't even know if they work on Windows. Um, so let's see, in remake, if we go to the index file, Well, so here I write a file. Uh, I think NCP, so we're copying the file. So you do get the project directory. Um, I think the only thing Um, I actually think all of this probably should work on Windows. But I mean, obviously it didn't, so... Oh, here it is. This is probably what didn't work. So... Although I think Shell is supposed to be... Shell.js is supposed to be cross-platform. Portable Unix shell commands for Node.js. Windows... Yeah, it's portable. So I actually thought about that. I didn't even realize I thought about it at the time. I'm being serious. Um, okay, well, I think if you can create a sessions, um, or, sorry, a variables.n file in the root of your project, and then just add these arguments to it. Uh, and it, since it's a local thing, you don't really need to... Um, oops. Those are supposed to be on different lines. <laughs> uh, so you can have the same session secret as me. So yeah, just put that, put put those in a variables dot file. And I I'm gonna test that on on Windows soon. Um, let's add that because that's probably a <laughs> would be a nice thing if the framework. Uh, worked on Windows, right? <clears throat> okay, so 
Coyote Coyote 5547. Hello, how's it going? Okay, so now we have the ability to get bootstrap data. Um, oh yeah, I was saying Google uh, actually says like if you're so if you're boot if you're like if you're say like your server rendering and uh, your web app and then you're like hydrating it I don't know on the front end with some data and that data is like uh, you know defined at the in the head of your doc or like towards the head of your document or whatever as like a giant like object which like some some web apps do that right um, Google actually rec recommended doing JSON parse uh, and then put passing that a string instead of defining the giant object because when you're, I guess when you're defining an object in JavaScript, there's a lot more overhead um, than if you just like parse a string and parsing the string is actually like a lot faster, uh, especially with giant objects. Have I heard of Cicada 3301? No, tell us about it. What is it? Uh, we would like to know, or I would like to know. Um, Okay, so let's get uh, get partials. Let's see where this is being called. <coughs> so there, that's fine. And then API routes and then rendered routes. Okay, so not too many places. Search it up on YouTube. Um, well, could you give me a hint? I don't want to like just do a random Google search on live stream, uh, especially when I don't know what it is. But you're probably not trolling. It's codes? Okay, let's look at it. It's kind of a nickname. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, that's cool. So it's a. Uh, it's a code. Very interesting. Hmm. Uh, I wonder if there's a... Um, I actually don't consume information by reading it anymore. I only listen to podcasts. Uh, man, there's a lot of podcasts on it. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, you know what I like? I like WMIC. So yeah, that's the one I listen to. Okay, cool. Um, You have a challenge that is similar to what they did. Do, you, uh, do I wish to accept the challenge? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, but someone else in chat might. Um, yeah. I, I um, do not have the time. But it sounds fun. I really, I don't know. I, I wish, I don't really, I don't know. I like what I'm working on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it sounds really interesting and really fun. Uh, maybe someone, someone in chat would be up for it. If you want to join, uh, our discord, um, do, 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 oh yeah, I think the discord's in this, in the stream description on Twitch. So you can just like use the link there to join our discord chat and you can tell us more about the, uh, the challenge. I think part of maybe people's hesitation might be they don't really know. I mean, you just kind of mention this thing that no one's heard of, and then you ask them if they want to do it too. So maybe just describing a little bit more about it and why it's fun and why it's cool, uh, or having like a um, a website for it. You know, like if you had a little website, I was kind of like hackerish, you know, 1980s feel or whatever. Um, I also suck at puzzles. Um, yeah. Okay, so get partials. And then we're going to get the matching partial. 
and then we get the bootstrap data. Okay, so here is where we made the mistake. So, well, not the mistake, but here's where we want to do things differently. So, at the top, we want also get bootstrap data. Um, install auto complete all. Okay. So get bootstrap data, nice. <coughs> okay, so um, partials, partial, 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 partial. Here we go. So get partials, and we're going to say bootstrap data equals get bootstrap data, and we get the uh, matching partial. Okay, so we got the bootstrap data, and we're going. We want to get the bootstrap data for. The current one. So let's say all bootstrap data, I guess. Um, so we'll do bootstrap data is going to equal all bootstrap data. And then it should be partials. And then it should be the name. <coughs> And then I think if there's nothing there, we'll use an empty object. I think that should maybe possibly work. Let's try. Okay. Um, so that should get so partials and then to do. Yeah, that should give us the bootstrap data. Okay, I mean, yeah, it kind of seems good to me. Oh, you know what? No, 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 okay, it'll just be undefined. Because booster, so partials is definitely always going to be an object. And then that might give us undefined. And then if it gives us undefined, we'll de default to an empty object. Boom. Okay, so then bootstrap data, bootstrap data, bootstrap data, boom. Got it. Okay. Let's search for bootstrap data here. Nothing. Get partials. Register partial. Okay, that's all. Okay, so let's try it. So now we're going to have localhost uh, 3000. Go to my to do list. Okay, I have nothing here. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, you know what it is? Uh, well, no, I don't know if this is what it is, but. There is something, um, user accounts. So I believe there's bootstrap data in here too. App data. No? Uh, where am I creating the user? The user accounts. Password matches. Sign up. Here we go. Reserve word. Okay, here's where. I create it? Okay, create user data. Uh, where is that coming from? Oh, user data. Okay. <coughs> create user data. Okay. So, details and app data. Okay, so instead of this, I want to have get bootstrap data. <coughs> so um, bootstrap data is equal to get bootstrap data, and that's going to give it back to us as um, user and partial. And user is definitely going to be there. And details and app data are definitely going to be there too. 
Okay, so... Um, let's say user bootstrap data, and then we're just gonna, we're gonna assume it's there. So we're gonna say user, oh, you know what we can do? Destructure, so we, yeah, we could destructure it like this, right? So we could say <coughs> um, details and app data. And this will handle now this and this. And then we're going to extend the user details with the args that we pass in. Details, write promise. Okay, update array promise. Okay, that looks good. Um, what did we have there before? So we're, we are details.json. Okay, so let's search for details.json. Let's search for app data.json. Okay, so it's not anywhere else in this file. I guess I could have just looked through it, but um, Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I don't actually think that solves our problem. So I'm logged in as this user right now. So if I go to remake data and I go to app data and I look for this user, it starts with a K, so it's this one. So I do have the to-do list <laughs> and each uh, item in the to-do list Oh, has a name and the name is just set to nothing so this is an accurate um, representation of the data uh, personal to do's uh, work to do's and okay and add to do list did not work cannot read property to do list of undefined okay Init API routes 113. Um, okay, there we go. So cannot read, what did it say? To-do list of undefined. So it's trying to get it from, oh. Okay. This is my mistake 100%. Okay. You know what I think? If they ever invent AI, it's going to be incredibly smug. Because um, I think that... Uh, uh, I think that most of the time when I'm like, oh, I made a mistake, I kind of can vaguely hear the computer being like, yeah, obviously, it was you again. Um, like, it's never the computer's mistake. It's crazy. It's always like some random thing I'm doing wrong. Like one letter off or like one number off or... I don't know. Like some logical thing that I thought I was doing but I wasn't actually doing. You know, where I just like wasn't passing the data. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like, you know, if you send that energy to the computer enough, they're gonna get like pretty confident, you know? <laughs> like they're gonna be like, yeah, duh, I'm always right, you know? So like, I think what we're teaching AI right now is that like, yeah, you're always right. I don't know, that was a stupid thought. Okay, so everything works again, I hope, I think. Sign the paperwork, meeting with sales, work to do's. Wait, how is this work to do's? This is personal to do's. This is work to do's. Um, okay. Your build is not working. It says cannot get slash in console.
Uh, Chandu, I really appreciate you testing this out and trying, like sticking with it, you know, trying to get it working. Um, can I get slash? Set up the hook. Huh. Okay, um, can you send me a screenshot of that, maybe, uh, on, on Twitter? Can you send, can you send it there, maybe? Or, or to, um, david at artistify.com. Either one. Because I'll test it on Windows soon, and uh, I'm sure I'll run into the same problems. I think I did test... No, I didn't test Remake, did I? I didn't test the CLI. I tested um, the framework on, I think, Edge or something? I think it worked on Edge. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I should, I should test the CLI and, and the... Um, the local framework on Windows. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, yep. <laughs> That's awesome, uh, Salvin. Um, and Chandu, thank you so much for helping me de de debug this. I really appreciate that. I, it, you know what, I have like a Windows machine right in the other room. I, I don't, there's no excuse for me not testing this. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I had to run into that. Uh, yeah. Um, Solvin, that's so cool that, <laughs> I know. Um, Solvin, that's so cool that you are now, like, you know, closer to the center of town. You can just, like, walk out the door and go to a, a store. That's really cool. Okay, so we made a lot of changes. Um, to how this is handled. Uh, you used to have to drive to the nearest coffee place. Wow, how far away was it? There's a huge mall, museum, opera house, several restaurants, etc., etc. That's really cool. Um, are there any green spaces around? Wow, 18 minute walk before. That's awesome. Man, that sounds so cool. <laughs> Let me come work for you, please. Um, I can, uh, I can, I don't know, implement remake pages. Yeah, that would be cool. Where, where are you? Are you in Montreal? Actually, I went to Montreal once. That was pretty nice. Yeah, you're doing the opposite of what I, what I've done. <laughs> Most of the companies I've worked for, they've started off in like really beautiful high skyscrapers right in the middle of town, and then uh, they move into like basements. <laughs> ah, the the place place de art the arts. I don't know how do you say that. Pla can you type it so that an American pr can pronounce it? Is it like pla d d r? Is it like that? <laughs> I'm really not trying to be insulting right now. Um, I'm sorry. That, there's no way that's not. Oh, pla plas des r r's. Am I? <laughs> I'm totally not saying it right. Oh yes, the plas des r's. The Plaza des Arts. Is that anywhere close? <laughs> I took French. You wouldn't know it. I took French in college. Plaza des Arts. Plaza des Arts. That sounds nice. Um, that's like a. Yeah. Okay. So. I think, yeah, separate, separating, uh, getting bootstrap data. 
So what'd you get at the store, Salvin? Did you go to the mall or did you just go to uh, like a restaurant or something? I guess it was just lunch, right? Getting bootstrap data from getting partials. Boom, done. Okay, so that is done. Add more template variables. There's a grocery store in the mall, so you got a big bottle of water. You're overloaded on caffeine. Water is really, really good for caffeine, I've found, when I want to, like, chill my roll. Ooh, that's cool. Wow. Woof. Jeez. That's awesome. Do you live near there? That's cool. Okay, now we know where Salvin lives. Two streets up and one street over. So up, over, this is Salvin's house right here. Now everyone knows Salvin. <laughs> Wait, you're actually telling us? Oh, that's where the new building is. Empty space in the top left. Yeah, party at Solvent's house. Um, in the aerial view, the empty space. I don't see the empty space. Is it this here? Or this? This one. Is it here? This is my guess. They, your building, replace these beautiful solar panels? I don't know if I can support it. I guess it is actually just like, it looks like one big solar panel. The big circle building is the opera house. Yeah, it looks like an art, art, artistic place. What is a, um, oh, it's covered in panels, that's awesome. What do you, are there like movies here or is it just opera 24 seven? Or like, I guess, I, I guess there's probably like plays, like Broadway type shows. And the long building in the middle. Oh, I didn't even notice this. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I did, but I, wait, no, not this one. Is this, this is the contemporary art? Opera and sometimes concert, concerts. I would think this is the mall. This is not the mall. Let's see, it feels like the mall. This is, you're saying this is the contemporary art building? Huh, what is this thing? I really want to know what this thing is. This looks like fun. So if I had to imagine what this is, this is like a, um, I'm not looking at your response because I'm going to imagine what this is. This is an anti-gravity uh, sphere and this is a tiny person in a blue spacesuit and this is a tiny person in a red spacesuit and this person just jumped and they're floating in the air because the whole uh, sphere is anti-gravity. I don't know exactly how they pull off the anti-gravity, but it's probably some kind of advanced technology. Uh, probably alien technology. I probably just landed there. See all this like bright light under there? It's probably like radioactive a little bit. Probably just landed there and the Canadians were like, cool, just uh, hang out there. Let us jump around in our spacesuits in there every once in a while and you can stay, because Canadians are really cool with things, mostly. Um, and they didn't even tell the rest of the world that there are aliens. What brats, what brats. 
This is a really cool building though. This is like a nice design. I guess unless your office is like the one next to this, then you're like hemmed in by this wall. Oh, this thing? I was just saying that this little round ball was an anti-gravity chamber that was uh, had alien technology and the aliens landed in Canada and Canada didn't tell anyone because they're so nice that they just said the aliens could stay as long as they let people with blue and red spacesuits go in there and float around. Um, and this is a person with a red spacesuit that's floating around in there. And this is a person with a blue spacesuit that's floating, that's standing watching the person in the red spacesuit floating around. And Solvin is saying that it's an old metro station. Uh, yeah, right. Does this look like an old metro station to anyone else? I don't think so. That looks like alien technology, <laughs> definitely. When I, like, does this, can anyone vote in chat? Does this look more like a metro station or alien technology? That's true. Yeah, don't you can't trust the government. Also, I totally feel like okay. Do you guys know those movies where the kid discovers the alien? I mean, ET, right? But there's other movies too where like the kid discovers the alien, and then he like keeps him safe, and then like doesn't tell anyone, and then somehow the alien's able to survive because the kid's like super nice. I feel like that kid is Canada to like the rest of the world. Like it's possible that aliens. If they could land anywhere, that like there would be a whole country that would just like get behind them and like not tell the rest of the world, it would probably be Canada. Because Canada would be like, no, we're not. We don't want to start a war. We don't want to like. We just want to be nice to these aliens and like, yeah, you can like chill here for like a few hundred years before we like open up to the world about you. I feel like Canada is that little kid. Canada is. Ooh, what's that kid's name in ET? Elliot. Canada is Elliot. Elliot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yep. It's hard to remember sometimes. Okay, so we fixed a big bug. Um, so I have a question for you guys about the remake API. So <clears throat> there are, so when you render a route, okay, so like say you're at, you know, example app.com slash your username and you have a route called like to do. This route will render, uh, sorry, this template, so the to do template that we define in pages uh, right here. So let's say it's to-do list, okay? So to-do list. This is to-do list is gonna render at three different places. So it's gonna render at just example slash to-do list. It's also gonna render at uh, your username uh, slash to-do list. And it's also gonna render at your username slash to-do list and then slash some ID, right? So there's three different places that every that uh, there's three different routes that every template uh, handles automatically, and what I'm curious is in the template we need a way of you know saying is it this type of the page or is it another type of page? Um, so which one would you prefer? Would you say would you prefer just using like a plain like if statement with like is username route, is page route, is ID route. And if you're curious what those mean, they correspond to what we just had up there. So uh, these, these ones here, um, uh, the username route is, um, Is that one the page route is also naming if you have any ideas about naming these so that they're more obvious and then there's the is ID route 
So would you rather have um, <coughs> kind of a template variable where you could just say if if is username route, if is page route, if is ID route. So that's the first option. Uh, what if you have an ID but aren't logged in? So the um, so yeah, that's a good question. So ID route. So it, the idea behind remake is that um, oof, how do I explain it? So like this is publicly accessible. So if you're not logged in, you're just not going to see the edit buttons, and you're not going to see the remove buttons, and you're not going to see the add to do button. But you'll be able to see everything else. Um, so yeah. So if you if you go to this page, you'll still see the same thing. Um, the, the developer will just have to hide it uh, if, if you're on, um, you know. But I meant, what if you have a page like to-do list slash ID? Mm. So I, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but I should clarify that if you don't have the username here, uh, this won't render anything right here. So this isn't one of the working examples. Um, this will just, yeah, yeah, you need the username in there. Because I, the reason for that is I want every page to be shareable. Um, so I want you to be able to like copy and paste this anywhere and have it, you know, work for someone else even though it's your page. Because um, I think that's a common problem in web applications is, is that you copy, you know, you go to like exampleapp.com and you see your page, but you, there's, there's no way to share it, right? If you share this, you're going to like get to the example app's like landing page, right? If you're someone else. So the idea is that any page with data on it um, has, a, uh, has a public route. Um, so, okay, option one is like this, right? Where we're saying, you know, if I, if, uh, if is ID route or if is page route, right? And then we're closing off the if. Now option two is pretty similar, but instead of having an if with a, um, with a, uh, variable that's defined for you automatically, you have something like this, which looks, I think, more official, right? So this is a custom, this would, these would be custom helpers. And so then you would just wrap whatever you wanted to display when you're on a plane route in this. Did I rename it? Yeah, I renamed it from page route to plane route. So yeah, again, any ideas around naming too would be helpful. Maybe is plane route would, is a little bit better. Um, yeah, so then you would put your content in here. So what do you think? What do you prefer? And keep in mind that this is a uh, hundred thousand percent times easier for me to implement. <laughs> Not really that much, but um, it's a little bit easier. Uh, is... People are saying things. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is the comparison. Okay, what did people say? Your only issue with option two is that it feels like blocks, not a conditional. Yeah. No, I get that. I'm just thinking that like, so say you're organizing your page. You know, like you're, this feels more, this feels more natural to me. Like if I'm just like creating a new page, I'm like, okay, I need these three, right? So the plain route is just gonna be like, 
um, you know, so, so say we're like at, we're dealing with like the about template. So it's like, uh, this is what we're about. And then would those only show if you're on those individual pages? Like you'd only see the content of username route in username route. Uh, yes. Yeah, so everything inside of here, you're only going to see if it's a plain route. There's other template variables too that you can determine, you know, if someone's logged in or not. Option two. I mean, it's kind of a conditional. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah, okay. I like that better too. It's a be a, an adventure to um, implement it too. And what do, what do you think about the naming? Does it does it make sense to um, to call this? I guess this is the main one I'm I'm worried about. But it doesn't make sense to call this a plain route and uh, that a username route and this. Uh, uh, an ID route, a root route, route a root route, <laughs> a root route. Um, yeah, I, I guess that that would make sense. Yeah, I guess yeah, that works better. Than plain route, you think? Yeah. Ah, uh, base route. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, nice. I like that. Cool, cool, cool. And then username route that that feels okay, and ID route that feels okay. How about item route here instead of ID? Does that feel better? Hey, silly only. How's it going? What are you uh, being silly about today? User route. I feel weird about user route because I feel like, so there is going to be just like slash username. And that's, I don't know, that feels more like a user route to me. You know what I mean? Like user route kind of feels like it's like their data or something. You know, it's like, I don't know. Will it always be username or can it be modified? Uh, no, it's always, it's always going to be their username. I mean, user route. I don't know. Another option. It's not bad, user route, but it just, it doesn't, it, it kind of sounds like something else too, you know? I don't think username route is the best, but. Yeah, okay, let's go with this for now. I do, I do like item route and base route. Um, and I think, yeah, this could probably use some, I don't know. Some improvement. User route. No, th so this, yeah, because I think the problem with user route is that there's multiple users here, right? There's um, people who are visiting, people who are logged in, people who are logged out, people who have data, people who don't have data. You know, there's too many users. So I feel like this is too unclear. Whereas this is telling me there is a username in the route, you know? I feel like that's slightly more clear, but I do think it could still use some improvement. Okay, so we're gonna go with this. Thank you, Solvin, for, for helping. Okay.
So we'll go with that. And I think this is the last thing today. I might not even finish this today. But it's unfortunate because we're not getting to our documentation. I guess we'll get to the documentation tomorrow. But um, yeah, I did work on it a while, for a while, so. No, you t you totally helped. Definitely helped. Okay, so we're gonna have to create another, um, a few small bugs. Uh, it's funny, it's actually kind of hard. The, the bugs. Okay, so this is done. We'll just delete that. So now we're gonna say, um, custom helpers for routing. So the, the reason I didn't want to do this is honestly because I don't understand handlebars, custom helpers well enough. Um, but this will be a good opportunity because I should, uh, if I'm using handlebars as the main templating, I should, it's probably important, right, to learn, to learn how to do it. So let's see. Um, Custom handlebars helpers. Um, so let's see. Handlebars. Let's say helpers. Oblivion air. How's it going? Um, what are you up to today? Okay, nice. So this, this is pretty nice. Um, <laughs> Hello. Okay, so all we have to do is this, except uh, let's console log uh, this and how am I loading Fave icon dot ico. Um, so I don't think I'm doing very much around the fave icon. Yeah. So if you if you create um, where is it being served from here? So if you create a fave a fave icon dot ico and you uh, dot ico and you put it um, in the the root of your website, the browser will automatically load it. It automatically looks for it. Um, and I think these days you can have the ico file be pretty big. I think before it had to be sixteen pixels by sixteen pixels, but now I think it can be a little bit larger than that. Um, so yeah. I, th I think that's right, but I think with older browsers, it doesn't work with a PNG. Um, also, I don't think, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, don't quote me on this, uh, I'm pretty sure browsers don't look for the PNG file automatically. But I don't think they look for the PNG. I think you have to define it in your HTML. Is that not true anymore? I think they only look for the ICO file automatically. Yeah, no, it's not hard to define it, but um, yeah, no, it's totally easy to add. Yep. The, <laughs> half the reason, though, that I actually add a fave icon is that I get like a 404 in my console that says like, we looked for your fave icon, but couldn't find it. 
uh, it stands for no op, no op, so no operation. Um, yeah, there's a lot of um, services online though. Uh, Real favicon generator is like my favorite. Um, so you can just upload an image there, and it'll help you. Um, it'll help you generate an icon for like apps if someone adds your website as an app for like uh, social networks uh, and then it'll even like handle the compression and the scaling algorithm and you can you can do all that uh, and you can use a PNG you can upload a PNG that's like 300 pixels by 300 pixels and it'll do all the scaling and stuff for you um, but yeah N NOOP stands for no operation so it's just it's a shorthand for a function that does not does does nothing. So in this context, this is um, a template helper that does nothing. Uh, so if you put stuff inside of it, it should just render it like normal, without doing anything. So let's test it out. We're gonna do no up uh, and no up. Okay. So now this should render. Huh. Oh wait. Uh, yep. I gotta actually trigger it. I think by going to the home page. Okay. Cool. So now we've got the the this context. So we've got data null params query path name current item parent item slash errors current user. Okay. Page author is page author. Page has app data. Okay, so um, let's implement our first one. Uh, so I think let's start with um, base route. How are we going to tell if it's the base route? So let's go into our um, where we're rendering the data. And let's see all of the data we're getting. Data params query. Okay, so it's a base route. I think if we don't have a current item, or I think, yeah, I think this will be the params. Okay, so if um, if params.id, so this.params.id, so if it has this, it's not a base route. So we're going to say if it doesn't have this, then we're going to uh, render it. <coughs> um, and can you show me how to do uh, an if statement? Conditionals, here we go. Yeah, okay, so yep. We'll just return undefined if it's not there. So this should work. So we're going to say, okay, if there's no ID provided, as well as no um, username. So I think we could say params.username, actually. It kind of feels like cheating. Because shouldn't we... Um, so all we're doing here is we're checking to see if there is an ID and a username in the route, which I think is fine. But we could also see if there's a current item or if there's a user. But no, that wouldn't make as much sense, I think. So yeah, I think this is fine. Okay, so I think we've defined our base route helper. So now I think if I do base route, Um, and let's put this in a different file. Let's put this in to do lists. So we'll say is base route. And we'll put it in an H1, I think. Okay. 
let's uh, refresh and this should not uh, display here because it's not on this template we have to go to to-do lists and then into one of the to-do lists uh, oh wait no 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 we have to go here and then slash oh and I don't have one right pages to do oh no I do have to do this oh because this is okay let's see what happens here hmm um so I would think oh no it's it's here this is what we got okay nice base route we got it <laughs> it took a little bit but we got it okay so um that actually does work okay so now let's implement the next one you know what makes me really sad <laughs> that like i'm implementing these like very simple helpers that are going to help us determine which route we're on and i can guarantee you these are going to look um like 10 times more complicated in like a few months and i don't even know why i don't even know why why they would get more complicated <laughs> but i can i can already feel it that these like very simple template helpers are going to get complicated okay so now we have a username route and we're going to say this if this <laughs> yeah exactly um i think it's even more for like framework dynamics though too because you're trying to like support a lot of people and a lot of different use cases so yeah you get complicated i think pretty quickly okay so for this we're just going to say if we have a, a, a username parameter and that should be pretty much everything so and then i think for the last one we just want to see if it has an id right so we just say uh item route this was actually much simpler than I thought it was going to be. Um, okay, so now let's go into to-do list and paste these. So this is going to be username and item. Okay, so let's refresh this. We should get only base route here. That's true. We'll go back and now we have a username route, and we go back again. Huh. Oh wait, no, no. Uh, here. Okay, and now here, th this is interesting. So we, we do, we are on a username route, right? But we're also on an item route. So I guess the question is, is that fine? I think it's fine. I guess it doesn't. I guess what you would have most of the time is you'd say is base route, is username route, and then inside of here you would you would have the item route, right? I'm not sure. And I'm curious, I think this works out of the box, but I'm not, I'm not positive. Uh, we'll say is not item out. Okay, so now let's go, what do we want? We want a username route that is not an item out. So that, huh. Okay, so I guess we don't get else out of the box. When writing a conditional, you'll often want to make it possible for templates to provide a block of HTML that your helper should insert if the conditional value is to follow. So handlebars handles this problems by providing a generic else functionality. Handlebars provides the block for the else fragment as options.inverse. You now I need to check for the existence of the else fragment. Handlebars will detect it automatically and re register a no op function. So see, this is um, the no operation function again. So they're saying, um, if if the user doesn't put an else here, 
they're just going to render an empty function. They're going to just render, uh, they're just going to use a no operation function. But you can also just, um, I think that's what they're saying. Yeah. So I think handlebars provides additional metadata to block helpers by attaching them as properties of the options hash. Keep reading this for more examples. Okay, so I think we just need to do this. Um, so else this return options and rest this. And let's just do that for each of these so we have else's for, for all of them. So yeah, it's already getting <laughs> more complicated. <laughs> um, okay, so nice. So now we have is not item route. And now if we go back to the item route, we have is item route. And now if we go to the plane route, we have is base route. Is username is item route. Um, so wait, what's happening? Oh, okay, yeah, because I'm not actually rendering these things here. Okay, so does this make sense to wrap <coughs> the item route uh, with the username route? Or do you think they should just be separate? You know, should, should username route only be this one? I should use a, a better username, I really should. Oops, sign up. Um, so yeah, is this a username route or is this also a username route? You know what I mean? I feel like it is, right? Because it has the username in it. And then this is a username route too. I think I'm going to stick with that, but I'm not sure. What do you, what do you guys think? Any, um, any advice? Any thoughts? Yeah. So you would say that uh, this, even though it has an ID, this is still a username route because it has the username in it, right? I think th that feels good to me. Yeah, I think that feels good to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, uh, now you guys know how to implement custom handlebar helpers uh, r really easily. I'm actually really impressed with the API here. This is pretty cool. With handlebars' API. I mean, it makes our API a lot simpler. Just base route, username route, item route, and then, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Okay, cool. So I think that is it for today. Um, I am sorry to leave you guys. I actually have a call soon um, with a potential business partner, kind of, for, uh, for Request Creative, actually. <laughs> I appreciate your excitement. Um, I mean, I could do, I could like stream for another like 15 minutes. If I, if you got two minutes, you're getting an error. Uh, are you using Remake? Or are you using something else? Chengdu. That, that will help. Sure, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to give the, you don't have to give him a, sh a sub. I'll I'll stick around for fifteen minutes. Okay, you're building a remake project. Okay, so content security policy. I don't think I have a content security. Okay, wait. Are you using Chengdu? Are you using Remake JS? Did you do npm install 
remake.js or remake. I don't think actually it should matter. Oh, thank you, Sullivan. That's really nice. 11 subs. That's amazing. Um, thank you, Sullivan. Ooh. That's cool. That's cool. A huge factor. This is a unique website. I like this. Um, Oh, okay, so you have an IT advisor there, but then you say a IT professional. So you want to say an, I think, there. Um, I think it's slightly weird that these sections are clickable, but this section isn't. I would maybe make this section clickable too. And just you could just have it go to the About Me, about me page too. Is this all in uh, HTML and CSS? This feels like Flash. This is cool. Wow. That's sick, dude. No, no, I understand. Your GitLab. Whoa, really do, doing the rebellious thing, huh? <laughs> Going with GitLab instead of GitHub. I feel like everyone's on GitHub. Um. Get in touch. Nice. This is nice. This is a material design, huh? But GitHub has a free plan now. Since they got bought by Microsoft. Okay, let's um let's see. So uh, yeah, let me just give you like a few pieces of, of feedback because I think this is honestly an awesome site. Uh, this should be clickable. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this uh, here. Um, it's kind of a cool effect, but it feels a little bit weird. I would just make the background um, a solid color here or, or something else, but not like a zoomed in version of your face. Um, yeah, or a better picture, or just a picture that's centered, right? So then the you know, the left side's blurry grass here, and then if the right side was blurry grass too, that'd be good. Um, this is annoying for me, so when I hover over this, this text shouldn't disappear. I should be able to like read it and stuff. Um, So yeah, that, that was a little annoying for me. I wouldn't make that uh, disappear as you hover over it. Um, and then get in touch. I love the transitions and everything. This form feels a little bit tight. So I would just space it a little bit better. Uh, not better, but like just, so line up these icons more with the things to the right and then add a little bit more margin below here, um, and then I would I would get rid of this heading and I would get rid of this. Uh, sorry, this fill in the form below. People know how to fill in a form, and I would just make this like bigger and bolder. If you have a suggestion or just want to say hello, and then like colon, because um, I think a lot of text above a form makes people less likely to read it because they're like, oh, I have to do something before I fill out this form. I just want to contact you. Um, and then, let's see, email address required, uh, subject, I would make as, as, le as little uh, required as you, as you can. So I would um, not have the subject or message be required uh, or something, or maybe the name, just like the email address and like the subject or something, right? Um, 
this is a nice effect. I think having this the get in touch not be transparent would be good because it's a little distracting and I think it would be more much nicer and much bolder if it wasn't like that. But in general, like this is a beautifully designed website. Um, this is a little weird. So you need some padding around this text uh, for each of these items. Ooh, that's sweet. Look at that. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, but you need some padding around it so that it doesn't reach the edge of the box. And then uh, make the text bigger because it's hard to read. A lot of your text on your pages are, is really big, which is nice. Um, but even if you make the headings a little bit smaller, as long as you make the blog posts a little bit bigger, that would be nice. Um, yeah, and I would consider making this purple a little bit... No, nah, it's fine. It, it is a little bit hard to read um, the white into the purple. It doesn't feel like it's the same thing. It feels like it's a heading and, the, and a subheading, but it, it's all one sentence, so that feels a little bit weird. Uh, I don't know what you want to do with that. Um, also, this X, is this an image or an SVG? This is an image. You definitely want to use an SVG there because it's um, it looks a tiny bit blurry, a tiny bit pixelated on my screen. Um, but if you use an SVG, it's going to look nice on every screen. Uh, so you use like Fun Awesome or something. Um, try clicking one. Where was I? Oh, here. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's really cool. And then you have the video here. Ask you a question. That's cool. I like that. Um, that's a little bit against my expectations. I would expect if I click here, uh, I wouldn't go to your YouTube channel. I would go to like a list of your posts. Um, but that's a small thing. In general, this is an incredibly nicely designed developer portfolio. Oh, that's not you. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, the author isn't you? Aran? Aran? Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It's very cool. Oh, okay. These are some quotes you really like. I would maybe put them, put each one in a, a quote, you know, put like a little quote thing around it. Okay, so this is a YouTuber. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. This is really sleek. This is nice. Um, yeah, I really like this section here. That's cool. Okay, so sorry, I gotta get back to Chengdu. So, um, oh yeah, okay, cool. Yep, Saturday, we're connecting then. Okay, sorry Chengdu for taking so long. So, how did, but how did you get past the other error? I thought you were having, Chandu, I thought you were having trouble even just getting started, getting it set up. The content security policy, I really don't think I should have a content security policy to, to find at all. Um, let me see. So if I go to, oh, um, let's discard this and let's just commit this. So um, custom handle, as helpers for different routes, routing options, routes, types. Oh yeah? Um, it's not raining yet, but it feels like rain. It's like pretty uh, humid. It's not hot humid, but it's just um, humid. A lot of water in the air and uh, very cloudy, very overcast. Okay, so content security policy. I don't think I have one. Um, or rendered routes, it would be in there, I guess. Or no, would it? How do you define 
CSP Express JS. I guess let's search for CSP. Okay, nothing there. Or JS. Uh, it's annoying. So much stuff. Okay, so I don't think anything in the framework. I guess what I would do is probably search for that error. So, uh, do you have um, this uh, defined in your HTML? like a content security policy at the top of your site? Did you add this? Huh, okay. Which browser are you using? And it's with the default Remank framework, like you're using the, like you have in project files, you have the, the pages look exactly like this, like index, login, sign up, to-do list. <laughs> yep. I'm surprised you guys can hear it that well. Um... Okay, um, I don't know what that's about. I'm curious what that's about. Chengdu, do you have in your pages directory, do you have index, login, sign up, to-do list? I just wanna make sure you're on the same one. Okay. Um, and does the app... Oh, you cl cloned? Wait, you didn't use the... Uh, which, wh which one did you clone? Um, Did you clone this one? Did you clone just remake? Is that what you're cloning? Oh, okay. So in order to so the f actual framework is inside of, uh, so this is why it's not working for you is because you need to, in order to get started, you have to do these. Did you do, did you try these? npm install dash g and remake create.
and then npm run dev. Yeah, you want to do do this in order to get started. Cloning this isn't the best because um, this is the CLI tool uh, that'll help you generate a remake project. npm install remake g did not do that. It didn't work. Well, okay, so one other thing you can do as I have uh, dev version of Uh, okay, so I'm going to make this public. Um, wait. Okay, so I'll make this public. Oh jeez, okay. Secrets. Okay, no more secrets. Okay, so now uh, you can go here um, and you should be able to just clone this and start with this. However, uh, you're getting started is going to be um, so First, uh, I think like clone this repo. So I think you're going to do git clone this and then uh, install dependencies. Uh, CD make framework uh, npm install three create a uh, variables that m file So I'm giving you um, this kind of like shortcut because it's not working. The project generator is not working for you right now, but in most cases, that that's the one you should use. But this is the steps that it's doing for you uh, with the project generator, or what it should be doing for you. Um, Okay. Uh, okay, so tell me if this works um, for you or not. Uh, I think this should work. I guess we could try it too, right? Um, so let's go here. Let's go into another directory. Uh, we're going to do experiment remake. Okay, and we're going to do get clone. 
<laughs> um, what is this saying? What does that mean? You don't have any... Oh, okay, I don't... Yeah, okay. I get that. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess the SSH one is better. Is there a reason for doing... Or, wait, wait. Is the SSH one better or the HTTPS one better? Framework, npm install. Okay. So I'm gonna go into here and experiment. I'm going to copy this. Okay, so in here, I'm going to do variables dot end, paste this in there. Okay, and then on dev. Okay. Can you know? Can you let me know if that uh, works for you, um, Chengdu? Did it not work for me? Oh, there we go. Okay. It, yeah, it's working for me. So I obviously I'm not on Windows, but um, yeah, this should this should work. Uh, and obviously. So can you can you also tell me, Chandu, did you start with trying to do the npm install g and then it just didn't work and when that didn't work? What? That's so weird. That's so weird. Oh, so it's trying. Uh, it's trying to use this um, library called. Okay, okay, okay. So let's see. Um, it's because you don't have a... So it's trying to use a file-based session store. But I'm not committing dot .sessions. Um, dot .sessions json so if you create inside of underscore remake can you create a dot sessions folder and see if that helps Oh, so it did create it automatically for you? Uh, so did you can you re, can you maybe try restarting the app? I do actually have to go. Sorry guys, it's been more than 15 minutes. But Chandu, I'm sorry that it's not working for you yet. Yeah, exactly. So it's still it's still bugging out even when you uh, restart that. Huh. I'll just commit this just to be safe.
You don't have that JSON? Oh, this one. Yeah, I, I don't know. This might be a bug with... Um, I guess one thing you could try, if you want, is to go into remake uh, main.js and you could just delete the... or you could just comment this out. So this uses um, a file file based uh, session store, which I've actually I've had some problems with. Um, so yeah, you could just comment this out, and you won't have sessions. Or you could use you could I think just delete this line the store, and I think that'll use that'll try to use in memory uh, sessions. I think. Not positive about that. Um, yeah, so I think the issue is with the file store. So just delete this line uh, and you should be fine. But uh, check in with me on Twitter or something. Um, I actually, I really have to run. But uh, thank you guys for stopping by and have a really nice evening. And I will be on tomorrow for at least a couple hours. Uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.